What's up everyone, John from ARTV. This is where you'll find album reviews, top 10 countdowns like you're seeing today, and music discussion. Today, I'm gonna be counting down my personal top 10 Coldplay songs. My top favorites, the best of the best, the cream of the crop. Coldplay just played the Super Bowl, and maybe you're watching this video way in the future and that's not relevant anymore, but I figured this was an appropriate time to go ahead and roll out my choices. You guys have been requesting it anyways, so make sure you keep requesting away in the comments section. Follow me on Twitter at ARTV Reviews to stay up to date with what's coming out next. Let's go ahead and dive into the top 10. Massive grandiose piano hits, well thought out lyrics, and an ever catchy melody. It's the epitome of what made early Coldplay material work like a charm. The buzzing bass line mixed in with Chris Martin singing the always in my head line, open up your eyes. It's just another factor in what made this song stand the test of time, at least for me personally. I mean, I've heard even the worst of Coldplay haters admit that this is at least a decent song, so you know that's saying something right there, as many people that hate on Coldplay for just no reason whatsoever. Fantastic tune. Story time. There once was a 13 year old boy named John and he wanted this girl so, so bad, but he was shy and he didn't know how to express his feelings. And so he would go out at night on walks with his dog, lay in the grass on his back, look up at the stars and play this song. Yes, I'm saying I have a personal and deep connection with the track. Some see it as a weaker entry into their catalog, but I'd argue that this is one of the defining moments of the X and Y movement that I thought was somewhat underrated. It's not their best album by any means, but at the same time, there are still plenty of things that work and keep Coldplay spinning on their axis. This is a song about being stuck in limbo, wondering what it's gonna take for you to take that next step forward to keep you from just sitting still and actually do something and be confident. Listen carefully and let it linger. I pulled a 180 on my opinion of this truly haunting tune from Ghost Stories. I initially dismissed the echoed and processed vocals before realizing that that's the exact element that makes this song work so well and cut so deep. A flickering synth line and some deep sub bass swell as Martin cries, leave a light on, signaling that he needs some sort of beacon of hope to collect himself and carry on. This happened and was written in the wake of a devastating divorce from his wife, Gwyneth Paltrow. And I see this as kind of the lowest of lows in terms of his emotional states. The track slowly builds in tempo in its final stages and cascades into a dark and almost danceable breakdown before spinning the spotlight back to Martin once again before the song's exit. I have to say, have the tissues ready for this one, guys. What a warm song this is. I mean, instant smiles come to mind whenever I think of Charlie Brown. It's upbeat, letting its hopes and dreams fly high as the acoustic guitar rollicks and the band lets go of one of its most explosive choruses. The instrumental will often loop in my head even years after the album's release, and there's one little thing that I really, really like about this song and find it very charming. It happens right at the end. The track is called Charlie Brown and originally had lyrics that referenced the Peanuts character, but it was eventually removed. But they kept the title and I like the little nod at the very end, the little outro there that's played on the piano. It sounds like it was borrowed directly from one of the little Charlie Brown classics and I remember hearing that melody played on the piano by my dad who was a huge fan of Charlie Brown and it just once again puts that smile on the face and it takes me back to that time. It's a very special song.
Talk is a prime example of whenever Coldplay were really selling themselves as an alternative rock band. I mean, this is a very riff-centric track. You're gonna hear electric guitars carrying this one, slicing in and out, especially on the chorus. There's a lot of questioning going on here, namely about the future and really pushing to be more than what you are currently. It could be for himself, a friend, a lover, really encouraging them, but I think it's applicable to anyone, which is really what makes this song stand the test of time. If you never thought you'd see a guitar solo in a Coldplay song, think again. Hurts Like Heaven became my favorite song on Milo's Iloto for so many reasons, but the driving guitar and the really just conquer the world type feel that this song takes on is what puts it near the top of my list in terms of not only Coldplay songs, but in terms of my favorites on Milo's Iloto. Hey, I'll admit to driving a little bit over the speed limit and blasting this song just because it makes you feel so alive when you listen. Definitely recommend throwing this one on and just cruising. Why is this clocking in at number four on my list? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. A certain dark sparkle in the eye comes along with this 2002 selection full of questions of religion, life, and death. The struggle in finding a balance between doing what's right and doing what you want to do. It's certainly one of the more interesting lyrical pieces to come from this band. Not to say that they haven't written some great things, but some people think of them as being very simplistic, and that works for them a lot of the time. But I like seeing this one flow from a different vein. But I think the musicality is really what sells this track in general. I love the bass line, the way it builds up the way it runs a little bit longer than a standard Coldplay or even a pop song. That's what really makes it stand out of a lineup to me. I was so sick of the title track from this record in 2008. It was everywhere. You could not escape it. But then comes Violet Hill. And I think to myself, why wasn't this the song that I could hear everywhere I go? It's such a massive tune and it was so unlike what I had heard from Coldplay before. There's a vision of stilled frustration drilled into us from those opening 35 seconds before it slowly washes in this tide of pianos and somewhat aggressive riffs along with Chris Martin's vocals. Answers are demanded as he cries, if you love me, won't you let me know? As the drums pound and the guitars power on. No, this is not a relationship driven song. In fact, it is an anti-government, a war and protest song yelling to be heard. It's certainly very interesting to hear from them and kind of spectacular because I had never seen the blood boiling inside of Coldplay's veins like this before. Okay, first off, if you've never heard this fucking phenomenal and fan damn tastic song, pause the video right now. Go hear it. Whether you've lost a friend, a lover, a father, whatever it might be, this song will tear you down and break you into little pieces like none other. It was originally written for Martin's ex-wife after she lost her father, but it turned into one of the biggest and the most inspirational songs of the 2000s. I say it's almost impossible not to feel something deep down inside, something stirring as you hear those guitars just kick in, followed by an earth shattering drum pounding and finally Martin's vocals just soaring back in along with those backing vocals as they cry tears stream down your face. I promise you I will learn from my mistakes. I was absolutely floored whenever I caught this song live when I saw them on tour in 2011 and I'm ever grateful to the guys for just giving this song to the world. Everything about it is perfect. You're probably wondering how I could put something over Fix You after giving it a description like that, but 
here we are, sitting at number one with a song off of Parachutes. I'll admit that my number one and two slots often fluctuate, but Shiver has constantly proven itself to me as one of the main reasons that I love Coldplay in the first place. I feel spine-tingling riffs and the angst of being head over heels for someone who doesn't even see you. It's all just really magical. The bridge of this track is truly one of the most towering to come out of that time period, standing tall nearly two decades after its release as one of the most remarkable things that Coldplay ever did. Nearly two decades worth of music from Coldplay and the clocks still continue to roll on. Seven different albums, countless anthems, and it all could be coming to an end. Martin said in an interview with Zane Lowe that this could be the final chapter in the book of Coldplay, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. Thanks for the music, guys, the performances, the love, everything. Share this video with a fellow Coldplay fan. Let me know some of your favorite tracks in the comment section. And of course, throw down some requests for maybe some more top tens that you'd like to see me do, band-centric ones. Thanks for liking the video, subscribing to the channel, because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. Other than that, I will see you guys very, very soon right here on ARTV.